been standing on this spot two years ago, talking to you, I'd be standing in the middle of a potato field on the western outskirts of the city of Toulouse in southern France. Today, I'm standing in a learning technology rich school. This video looks at how, over the past two years, we have arrived at the place we are in today. I'm Tony Cruttenden, the Director of Information Technology, and this is the International School of Toulouse in France. All the students have front page 2000 on their notebook computers. Could you relate how this software has been used in science this year? Yeah, we've used uh, front page on a couple, a couple of occasions where students have written their own web pages. One was with a year eight lesson on a biology topic to identify organi organisms using dichotomous keys. And sometimes this has been done, or I've done this in the past, with cartoons, and they've had to write their own dichotomous key for cartoons of. Uh, of different kind of space aliens and it illustrates the principle very well but with having Mavica cameras and the ability to write web pages and some that use word documents uh, in fact as well um, we managed to do dichotomous keys using photographs of the students in the class themselves and so they wrote uh, questions which would identify different students from the class and then made uh, pastiche of the photographs and a, a dichotomous key um, themselves. <laughs> We've been able to equip the music department this year with Cubase VST as its technology base. Could you please explain a little how you have used this in your teaching? Year 7 and 8 have actually used the video capacity of Cubase um, to combine drama and music projects. In drama they will video the, their work um, using digital cameras then they will import the movie files and record soundtracks to their own drama work. Six million, um, 300 mille touristes en 1999, 1860 km d'autoroute et 3 euros au port. On va continuer à te cuisiner. As a teacher of geography and, of course, a French language teacher, this has put you in an ideal position, really, to exploit both subject areas. Mm -hmm. How have you done this and incorporated the technology into your teaching? We've covered a few topics in geography, in French, and uh, I decided to, to make it a little bit fun with them. And uh, I decided to ask them to make a game out of all the things we had learned. But uh, for that we had to use an English program which is Hot Potatoes. So that meant that we had to move from English ideas to go to French ideas. And I wanted to know how they were able to cope with this system. And uh, well, they, they are just producing the, the French games using geography topics. Uh, this is seconded by Poland. The port of Trieste to fall under Serbian power again. Um, you have a comment to make? Yes, we have uh, revised that. 
So, you would like to throw this out? Or yes, like I'd like to throw this out. Nice thrown out, okay. You have uh, very little time, Britain, to get your, second, uh, your amended proposal in. This is the last in the current round. Uh, it's proposed by Italy, I believe. We propose to gain control of the naval base in Albania in exchange for Trieste with Serbia. It's the naval base of Albania, not Albania. Just the naval base? Yes. I see. Okay, so we have a naval base here in Albania in exchange for Trieste. Okay, that's what's on the cut. That's on the table. Okay, so that's proposed by Serbia or Italy. Yeah. Proposed by Italy, seconded by Serbia. Uh, comments from Italy, perhaps. Now, Richard, your uh, internet site for humanities has created a lot of interest this year, and I know the kids are very enthusiastic about it. Would you like to uh, relate to us uh, how you went about setting up that and what your motivation for doing that was? Well, the Humanities website is um, is a little bit different, I think, to, to most school websites in that uh, it's not so much a website that creates content for students to access. It's not just a, a website used by students in quite a passive way. If you look at the content of the school uh, Humanities website, about 85% of it is actually student work. It's actually the work uh, that's been produced in the classroom and at home using the laptops. And that's the big difference that uh, laptop technology allows us um, to move towards. And, and that is that the internet is used in a creative way by students um, building appropriate formats for their learning rather than simply using information produced by other people in a very passive way. <laughs> I know also that another of your interests has been uh, integrated studies where you have uh, worked collaboratively with uh, other disciplines in the school. Could you uh, tell us a little bit about that please? So Jonathan, the music teacher, uh, was viewing uh, some of the work that his students had produced and I just happened to look over his shoulder. The, stu the work that had been produced he was accessing from, from the school server so I was then able to access it as well. And, we both had a look at um, the sort of projects that uh, his music students were producing. He was doing work on, on Shakespeare, writing some music uh, that was appropriate to the sort of dramatic scenes. I was studying with the same group of students, Elizabethan England and social history. Um, we were able then to think of ways in which we might integrate the technology and the content, but with the range of skills being reinforced across um, both subject disciplines. It's on the board. Okay. Solve them on paper, you're going to graph them and derive. There's going to be three different situations, and then uh, that'll be something directly related to the course. It's, it's basically a, like a flight simulator for kids to try uh, to test their ideas on what random behaviour means. Um, right up moving through the levels of understanding to um, using the methods of maths to actually uh, quantify probabilities. So I've used this in the class on a very much uh, what you'd expect in a science class, sort of experiment, hypothesis, um, hypothesis testing approach, which uh, really did um, transform the nature of the teaching because whenever they want. Um, the network enables them to uh, share ideas and share uh, projects and investigations in a pretty powerful way. Um, it's not a piecemeal approach, which I would have done in the past. Where, where would you say that uh, you think your maths teaching would be in say 12 months from now? I know it's a difficult question, but uh, we've been involved with this technology for 12 months now. Mm. We've got over the first teething troubles, if you like. The uh, introductory phase is well and truly over. Do you think there'd be a period of consolidation, or are you still looking to sort of t to push the envelope and find new ways of uh, using technology to teach maths? Well, some of our programmes are still being integrated in our programmes of study. That's a, a work in progress, like Cabri and Derive. Um, we're still finding ways to use them in the classroom. Twelve months from now, I would uh, I would hope that we could be using. The the kids work and publishing it more. I think uh, the, the, 
The power of learning in the classroom is compounded when it's shared. Well, thanks for uh, sparing us some of your time today, David. I'd be very interested to hear how you have managed to combine the use of laptops this year and uh, your Macintosh suite in the design and technology area. Using the main uh, software packages on the laptops, uh, we're able to work in conjunction with other departments using uh, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, for mainly recording analysis and synthesis of, of uh, work related to design problems. Uh, for example, you're researching a, a particular product, let's take for example one of these, uh, like these Twitter cameras, um, and a student's looking to produce their own prototype of the product, we can go onto the internet and we can research and gather information together, we can use digital photography, and they can all record that information onto their C drives on their, on their, uh, on their laptops for, for portability, taking it home and using it as, as, and, as and when required. That particular aspect is important to me because it gives the students autonomy to study away from school. Um, it gives them autonomy to be able to work with visuals, uh, and work with their own uh, static and moving visuals which they can import, incorporate into the design portfolios. One of the other advantages that I want to try and develop, one of the other areas I'd like to try to develop with the laptops, is to give the students the opportunity to video conference uh, on their own away from school, to, to talk to students and professional people in the field of design um, and technology uh, so that they can actually take on board what's happening in the real world. The point about the real world is where Macintosh has come in. In design and technology, in various spheres of uh, web design, graphic design, industrial product design, Macintosh is in the mainstay in, in those particular fields. That's why I've been able and very fortunate to be supported uh, to get a suite of Macintoshes into the school, which allows me to work, especially with the senior students, on software packages and on projects which the real world can also recognise and work with. I notice in the galleries around the school that uh, you successfully got your students to combine, if you like, what you might call traditional media, as, you, as found in most art departments, with digital media. Could you uh, talk a little bit about your uh, philosophy and the way you've uh, managed to do that? Uh, so often it will be at their uh, instigation that the ideas come forth that they would like to, for example, uh, develop as we have examples in the foyer currently in the Rotunda Gallery where students have used uh, the colour copier, they've used uh, scanning devices to take their own artwork, that's the important thing, their own initial artwork and actually extend and develop it technologically, digitally to produce um, quite professional graphic uh, artwork. When I first uh, played with the idea of uh, using laptops in the classroom and when I arrived at the school and was uh, confronted, if you like, with uh, people actually uh, using these things, uh, it occurred to me that perhaps, uh, like a lot of artists, they would actually go away and work uh, by themselves and very much uh, just using the laptop as a way of cutting themselves off from the rest of their peer group or their classmates. But in fact, I found it to be quite reverse and um, with a lot of work that I've been doing in art, particularly research aspects on their laptops, there's often a great sharing of material. They discover things and they call each other over. And actually the screen has become a place where uh, small, if you like, little classes, uh, little events, learning events take place. I think any English teacher will tell you that a laptop school is a dream. Because um, so much of English really is about, is about students drafting, redrafting, editing, changing the way something looks. Now, the fact that word processing allows them to do that, constantly recreating new text, changing the audience, is fantastic. But much more than that, within a school like this, we can publish stuff instantly. So the, the audience changes. So much of written work done by students has an audience of one teacher. And so it's work that my students do has that. But when you work in a school like this, what can happen is that Work can be delivered and put up onto, the, onto a website within minutes and students are aware of that and that transforms, that motivates things. You've also got situations like um, group work 
and group work can now operate on a, a electronically much, much better. You can have students working, three or four students working on the same project, putting it together and under a, a different folder, creating a website together. Even using email for, for group work across, across a classroom is fantastic. It, it enlivens everything, motivates everything. So I wouldn't say that it transforms what we teach. What it does is it transforms the way in which the students engage with the activities. Teachers often work in isolation from each other because of the nature of the work, because so much of the work takes place within the classroom within closed doors. One of the principal benefits that we didn't anticipate and that I'm sure will grow and develop and become much greater is the way in which teachers collaborate. In the past, collaboration was often one person focusing on one unit or somebody sharing something that worked very well. Now, the technology publicizes everything that you do. Because the work is shared, because we create folders of work, because we create websites of work, everything is there publicly and taken by the teachers. I think one of the ways in which things are going to improve enormously, it's already happened, it's, it's, it's going to happen much more, is that the classroom walls will, will almost cease to exist. The collection of interviews you've just seen in this video are forming part of an evaluation process that the school is undertaking. After 12 months, we feel the time is right to look back at where we've come from and examine the steps we've taken, to look at our successes and to look at our failures. Certainly I, in the making of this video, have gained a great deal of information, as indeed I hope you have in the last 30 minutes.